Hello everyone. So here I'm going to talk about the blockchain. So there are two ways to get rich, work or invest. I believe the majority of will concur with me. All right, in this case, what's the difference between the two? As far as I understand the mechanics, work does not allow you to earn more than you can work. So sooner or later, you will reach the limit of working to the maximum and earning accordingly. But you will no longer be able to work better and harder. <laughs> Never mind. Let's not stop the person trend. So the only way alternative left sorts and investment, or to be clearer, investment in crypto. Well, fret not. I'm not even come here to advocate for crypto investment. Investing in crypto sometimes can test your mental strength in the way you never expected. Sometimes it can hit you so hard that coming back to crypto trading might seem impossible. You understand what I mean. Don't lose your mind and obviously, uh, most importantly, the value. Uh, imagine the amount of work that would kick off the possibilities of blockchain in to solve the real world business problems and the way blockchain is coming to every industry. So oh, it's a bubble, this and that. I don't think it's the it's the beginning of the incredible 20 year kind of creative run and something that last happened when the internet came to the picture. So uh, first, what is blockchain? So uh, Blockchain is a immutable timestamp series record of uh, data that is distributed and managed by a cluster of computers. And the four characteristic blockchain is very important, like security, single source of truth, and removing the intermediaries, transparency, and trust. And the way blockchain bring the consensus, replication, immutability, security, uh, it was first created to enable the cryptocurrency, but has since been widely touted for its potential to transform the entire industries. The blockchain system works on the principle of decentralization. This means the control of not in the hands of central agency, but to a distributed network of nodes. This will help in keeping the data safe even if any specific node is compromised. Also, the information is blockchain recorded and is stored sequentially along with an exact time stamp. The previous information can't be altered, can't be deleted, you can only amend the data by adding a new block. This max tampering the blockchain is very hard and impossible. But blockchain has many more potential use cases beyond other than just serving the Bitcoin and building a cryptocurrencies. You can even trade the anywhere around the globe without knowing him personally and without intermediary party like banks. So example, let's say uh, if you want to sell your response for currently, you will use a platform like eBay which acts as an intermediary between you and the partner you are selling. The payment might be processed via some bank, which will cost you some money and delay in some time. But with, a, but with blockchain, you can do this in real time without involving any intermediary. So blockchain is not only about Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies. It is never all over. People think blockchain means Bitcoin. Blockchain is simply a digital currency that is built using blockchain technology. There are many use cases being built over which can basically trade any asset using blockchain. So if blockchain has lots of benefits, then what is the uh, hampering the adoption and growth of blockchain? So I believe there are two things. One is the lack of knowledge and understanding in the industry, in the, in the community. And there are misconceptions about blockchain is going to replace the existing bird, but technically it's not. To get started, let me quickly walk you through the evolutionary stages of blockchain uh, in the last decade. So first, it started with Bitcoin in 2008, when the first Bitcoin white paper come in the picture by Satoshi Nakamoto, which is even an anonymous person. And it introduced peer-to-peer -peer electronic case system. Then an another era come in the picture by 2013 to by 2016, where the smart contract, Ethereum blockchain, where you could, could program your smart contract in a way it could automate the system. And then after 2016, the new world of blockchain, enterprise blockchain, like Hyperledger Foundation found in the uh, blockchain for solving the real world business problems. And this was this this phase was marked by a huge number of proof of concept, primarily to gain the early insight into the technology was capable of. Since 2018, blockchain as a technology has begun maturing. And the advantages of this technology are being widely recognized in the enterprise blockchain. Even governments are started to look at the blockchain adoption and in the world is exploring blockchain and building something on blockchain, whether it's US, France, 
Korea, UAE, India. Even recently, last year, uh, India announced their national blockchain strategy to build the blockchain infrastructure for better governance and solving the real world problems. As the technology evolves, evolves Gartner trend said that blockchain is going to impact the impact the blockchain and is going to be traditional technology. And it's predicted by by 2025, it will be 176 billion dollar economy, and it's going to be exceed by three trillion dollar by 2030. The future of blockchain looks bright in part because of the way governments and enterprises are investing big as they uh, to this innovation and you know, application. So if you see the different uh, report from the Gartner, from IDC, from World Economic Forum, these are the report from the PwC saying like it is going to be impact the world and you see the adoption by the country level in billion dollars. This is a report by Deloitte is talking about uh, the what the CIOs and CTOs talk about and give the importance of blockchain in digital transformation. This is the country-wise adoption in blockchain. The Australia with the China, EU blockchain, Estonia, maybe heard about the Estonia blockchain. Dubai blockchain strategy, they're going to be completely paperless by 2030. Even India announced their national blockchain strategy last time. Finance Minister announced about having a CBDC and crypto regulation bill to the adoption. And there are various state governments is doing something blockchain with the Kerala, whether it's Tamil Nadu, whether Telangana, and then US. So you can see here, bit, blockchain is beyond cryptocurrency and beyond the just Bitcoin. You see the use cases adopted by the various industries whether it's Oracle, whether it's HSBC, whether Pharma. And so demystifying a blockchain to kind of cover the use cases in the various industries. So let's start with use cases. So the food supply chain. So you could create a, create a supply chain for taking the traceability of the particular food items. It could be your, your could be groceries, your, your kind of any kind of uh, devices, and it could be anything. Uh, payments, cross-border payments. So currently in the financial services, all the all the payments is run by the SWIFT system, and there's a third-party involvement. But using a blockchain, you could do the real-time payments using the uh, markets. Capital markets, where you can do the uh, captive markets, uh, where you can create a faster settlement system. Trade finance, uh, we know like in the trade finance system, there are multiple parties and multiple stakeholders get involved. There are hundreds of documents getting processed by different authorities. That could be enabled by blockchain to do the real-time transaction in a, in a better and faster way. Uh, with the blockchain's nature of uh, security and uh, traceability, you can implement in the compliance and audit system. Money laundering system, uh, where blockchain-based KYC and ML-based system could secure and transfer the financial services system. Healthcare, so in COVID time, always there are always issue to prove like uh, whether you are a COVID not impacted, you got the vaccination, and there are more than the healthcare, healthcare records, there are kind of clinical research reports required some kind of uh, data to be trusted and transparent. Real estate is the fractional ownership. That means you can divide the, your property in a number of tokens, and then any uh, retail can really invest, can invest on those kind of properties. Media, so you must heard about like there's the NFTs in a, in a Hangama in Chingari where Salman Khan actually promote. Another use cases in energy where, where you could peer to peer tracking. Uh, even Uttar Pradesh government is using a blockchain based peer to peer trading system. Uh, where, and there are a number of various use cases in terms of kind of renewable energy certificate, uh, green energy certificate. And other than uh, use case, there are many things in the government like voting, e-voting, like suppose even CDEC and some IITs, even election commission is building some pilot on the e-voting e based on blockchain. Record management where it could be any kind of document, your birth certificate, your degree certificate, like IIT Kanpur recently did the uh, uh, blockchain based degrees on, a, on one of the hyperledger in the blockchain. Uh, even CBAC are issuing that uh, high school and secondary certificate on, a, on blockchain. Another use case is the identity management where, because identity is very important when you are doing something virtually and playing a role in a, in a kind of metaverse kind of environment. So how, how, you, how you digitize, how you create a digital identity, like suppose we have Aadhaar, but Aadhaar is a completely, completely centralized system. Even Aadhaar is working on Aadhaar 2.0 where you can prove your Proving your all the information, like suppose zero knowledge proof, like SSI. So, these are the number of use cases, and it's beyond crypto. 
tokenization, NFTs, DAO, CBDC, Metaverse, all is trending. So NFTs are the are the thing where you can represent something digitally. Even you can tokenize everything. You, even we are tokenizing the could be anything. It's just not the just the art or some kind of images. Uh, another interesting thing coming in uh, NFTs are kind of you can use the NFTs in the real world application like supply chain, like fashion, like luxury brands, like real estate, even digital identity. This is very interesting, the same CBDC which recently when uh, Indian Prime Minister announced in the last budget, like uh, India is working on their own central bank digital currency. So it's going to be some kind of cryptocurrency which is backed by the central banks. And if you see the report, there are more than 100 plus countries already working on such kind of CBDC and it's going to impact the payment system. And 10 plus countries already adopted and running in production, uh, like Africa, like Nigeria, uh, like Bank of Cambodia, like that. And this is, this is going to be really transform the payment system globally. And now from the last year, we must heard about this metaverse, 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 when, when, the, when the Facebook renamed their brand name to Meta. So metaverse is the combination of the AR, VR, blockchain, digital INT, digital assets, crypto payment, trust and transparent system. And uh, when this COVID uh, epidemic is started, then how, how, how the companies and the education system uh, being present physically is a challenge, but but using the metaverse, you could be you could be present everywhere, and and there are lots of things and opportunity in the metaverse. Like like uh, it would be around 800 billion dollar by 2024. It would be 10 trillion economy running in the in the metaverse, and not not just the uh, is kind of virtual, but there are number of use cases. Even like HSBC launched their uh, uh, kind of uh, innovation center in a metaverse kind of decent land. And so this is a Niti Aayog report which launched uh, last year by the Planning Commission of India, like with the, what, the, what is the strategy of blockchain for India and what are they are doing. So the case in India, how we are dealing with them, this wave. So uh, this even this year itself, PM Modi announced the uh, blockchain based degree certificate at IIT Kanpur. Even CBC is uh, building and uh, having a cert have a certificate system on blockchain. Even we are working with one of the university at MIT Pune. Uh, Aadhaar 2.0, where it would be kind of a, a kind of zero knowledge proof kind of system, where you no need to prove your all the information while sharing the Aadhaar details. You just can share the only your pin code and prove your location. Uh, CBDC announcement by the Prime Minister of India and regulating the crypto bills. Even even uh, MIT Ministry of IT and Telecommunication, STPI is having a blockchain center of excellence and promoting the startup ecosystem. We are a part of that ecosystem and kind of STPI. So I think there are lots of initiative by the government to adopt the blockchain and promoting the blockchain ecosystem in India. Uh, take example like in uh, Telangana, Hyderabad having a dist uh, blockchain district, Kerala having a very nice blockchain strategy like India. So, so this is a national blockchain study stated like what they want to do. They have a, there is a, there is a blockchain layer, there is a platform layer, then a smart contract, all this technical stuff. So, and all these cases. So now, I think this is interesting. I have seen on the LinkedIn like there are three generation of the internet, like web one, web two, web three. And web one is simply you just sharing and uh, just accessing the static information, like only username and password. You don't have control what you can share, what you can present. And then another era, era comes, Web 2.0, where you use the social media, you can share your thoughts. But all this managed and controlled by the central companies like Google, Facebook, Twitter. But now this Web 3.0 started where this main concept to give the ownership to the user. For example, like currently on the our data, Google and other companies are monetizing it because they have a central system. But using blockchain, you could your own data and you could decide what to share and what not to share and how much share. So the blockchain uh, 
is going to be the part of the Web 3.0 in this metaverse, this NFTs, in this tokens, all these things. So what value blockchain brings in Web 3? So first is a blockchain is a distributed ownership. So trust is not owned by and run by some kind of one central company. It could be decentralized. Data stone blockchain is immutable because it uses cryptography. It uses hashing mechanism. So whatever is written is permanent and it can't be uh, deleted. And no single company can create, moderate, all the things. So it simply shows the unfolding potential. Blockchain will create a trusted, unfitable, unaccessible repository of data and information that is accessible worldwide. Please don't confuse blockchain with Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. Bitcoin uses a blockchain technology, but blockchain is not Bitcoin. The value of blockchain goes for beyond the initial implementation of cryptocurrencies. Next, realize the blockchain is not just a technology, but a fundamentally new way of think about how data that will create a new internet of era. I strongly feel that blockchain is a transform the banking, payment, supply chain, healthcare, digital identity, climate change, carbon accounting, and especially the reaching the, our SDG goals and everyone's goal. Meanwhile, it will be interesting to see what the future holds for blockchain technology, especially regarding the money transfer, banking services and building a decentralized marketplaces. As you can see, there are tons of potential for blockchain technology and it's a con constantly expanding. Also, the future looks bright and when you consider that it's already showing promise in almost every industry, it seems like the best is yet to come. The horizons have definitely stretched beyond the next night. Thank you everyone. Have a nice day.